Not a whole lot that I could do with the Beetle Zord as far as its overview. It just kind of is. I mean, yeah, it's got some nice frilly details. A little asymmetrical from above. But it doesn't have any posability. It doesn't have any major gimmicks or anything like that. It's just kind of just kind of is, you know. Little little asymmetry from above. A little bit. See, there's that side, and there's that side, and really, that's uh, that's all you could say about the Beatles Lord. Short but to the point. Wait, 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 wait. That's not true. I lied. I lied. It can also do this. does this. Get out of there. Ew. Crazy spinner they wheel. And it does that. It's nice to have dust on the on the shooting shelf so that you can actually see the wheels turning. How about that? There is no lock or tab or anything to hold the head. So you're always at risk of I suppose that counts as posability. He can kinda of look at you in a quizzical type way, or he can look away from you if he's feeling down today. Or you can just make him look, you know, ridiculous. That's kind of a mean-looking head right there. So anyways, yeah, that is it for the Beatles Ord by itself. Now, there is a reason why this is called the Beatles Ord with Mega Ranger set. And that is because it comes with a 3.5 inch, non-posable, derpy-faced, green Mega Mode Samurai Ranger. Or would that be Green Samurai Ranger Mega Mode? Whatever. Anyways, yeah, here it is. Complete with a Samurai Mega Blade, which is series accurate. People have asked me, Ava, what do you think of the Mega Modes? Well, obviously it's Bandai America's attempt to milk more money out of us. And the reason that they give in the show, well, actually they don't give a reason in the show, but the reason that they give in the show is kind of stupid as well. But to be fair kind of inspired by Kamen Rider and more more to the point Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie from 1995 I really really like the segmented armor look that's just I, I'm sorry I just love that thing I, I can only sp stand uh, skin tight outfits for so long with maybe a little detail in the helmet once in a while you know I can only tolerate that so much but on the other hand I'm not a huge fan of uh, Kamen Rider so you know this is about as close as you can get to the the really segmented armored look I'm kind of glad and kind of upset that Bandai America chose to do something about that. Anyways, uh, yeah, here it is. The uh, three and a half inch fixed pose Green Ranger. And oh look, he's got a pair of holes on the bottom of his feet. So what you do is you peg him into the peg that is right there and only there. You wiggle him around. By the way, I believe the sword and helmet are the only things that are PVC on this figure, the rest of it is ABS plastic, which isn't entirely true considering how strange the plastic is on these Bandai America Zord Builder system thingies anyways. The, the ABS is weird. Anyways, yeah, you can put your uh, Mega Ranger... Now, the ironic thing is, his foot is not touching the toy on the other side. You cannot turn it to get it any closer than that. Could have some mad balancing skills to make that thing work, huh? Turn that a little more so he's looking a little more forward. So yeah, there you go. Now, in case you're asking, yes, you can... I know this isn't a good angle. You can peg him into the other side, and you can get his foot a little closer. You, you could turn his head the other way, but I'm not quite sure why. And there you have the completed Beetle Zord with Mega Ranger. <laughs> Now, as we are all aware, aware, the Samurai Rangers originally came from Japan. And their folding zords, whether you know it or not, are based off of the ancient Japanese practice of folding paper, which is known as origami. And basically what you do is you take a square sheet of paper and you fold it, and a couple of hours later you get things like an animal or a a building or a flower or in extreme cases a face. I mean these things get to be pretty elaborate. It is an art form 
but it does take a very long time to get the elaborate stuff done. So they've been at this for hundreds of years, and origami really does exist, okay? It's not a Power Rangers thing. Anyways, Bandai America felt that it was their responsibility to both educate and entertain children, and so they provided us with a four and a half inch piece of cardstock paper, which you then have to punch out the pre-colored sections, and when you do that, you come up with a really, really, really convincing Beetlezord origami, which ironically does not entail any actually folding of paper. You know what? That's what those Japanese scholars and artisans really needed back then hundreds of years ago. Cardboard. Now it looks proper. And, and by the way, this thing is on the verge of collapsing. Yeah, there, see right there. This this thing is like they didn't they didn't even uh, I should save it for the complaints. Okay, yeah. There it is, an origami beetle sword. So, our first proper combination of the year. And thank Christ, it's not limb swapping again. Again, it was possible to do this with the uh, DX Shinkano from 2009, but uh, it you had to open up the head and the panel, which is totally not on the Samurai Megazord, by the way, this panel would actually flip up, but it wouldn't latch down the same way. So, uh, as I must re-emphasize, and I won't, from here on, uh, this was actually a good modification that Bandai America made. You can actually put the helmet away. You don't have to worry about it lying around somewhere else. So anyways, there's that. It's that. We are then going to take that thing off. First time I had to do that, I really, really had to struggle to get that thing off. So don't worry. It is supposed to come off, not because it was designed to, but rather because it's part of the transformation. Going to split the horn. It's nice that they put some, you know, gaps in the top or bottom, so you can actually stick a fingernail or a, a sliver of skin in there. You know, that that's kind of helpful. Slide this onto there. It's a little tricky, and ironically, it actually disconnects the joint right there. Whatever. You can sit down there. Take this. Pull this up like that. And we're going to stick that into the left hand. And I have to reach across the camera. Am I going to bump it? Nope, I didn't. Put the sword in there. And there you have the, I want to say, Beetle Blaster Megazord. It's either Beetle Blast or Beetle Blaster Megazord. I've, I've got this weird vibe of big bad Beetleborgs going through my head right now. And I know you're not supposed to cross-pollinate like that, but... Uh, I think that's what they called it in the show. I saw it a couple of weeks ago when I started doing research for all these things. Anyways, yeah, I, I don't care. And besides, it's not like the instructions or the packaging are that helpful anyways, because, you know, heaven forbid they actually put the name of these things, the proper names on these boxes. I know, I know, I should have saved this for the commentary section at the end, but, oh, I've got burning passion about this. Okay, here's the box. Ooh, spoiler alert. Ooh, three zords combined. Ooh. You don't see the... The Beetle Zord with the Megazord anywhere by itself, anywhere on here. It's not here. Oh, yeah, by the way, this toy didn't come out for another seven months after this one was released. Thanks for promoting that. I think he was happy with his mugshot right there. I don't know. He doesn't look very happy. Like, I'm not planning to review the packaging, but the point is, there's nothing on here that says anything at all about what this thing is called when it's combined. They're just busy promoting other bullshit. Here it is on the instructions, okay? They, they tell you, you know, here's the contents. Again, derpy face. Actually, he looks better in black and white than he does in color. I'm just saying. You can attach the thing. And then, and then, oh, yeah, I really took instructions to tell you all these things. You could just look at the box and know what the hell you're supposed to do. Anyways, here's the instruction. It says, how to attach Megazord set number 31579. Sold separately. It, and then it tells it to you in Spanish and then in French as well or something like that. Whatever it is. Well, the funny thing is, they don't even tell you what this thing is called. It's just kind of there. And then they totally spoil you about, like, like you're not supposed to keep the instructions for these things. Oh, look, you can do the Beetle Zord along with all these other things you totally don't have right now. And, and by the way, they don't even tell you... Okay, Samurai Battlewing. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, but anyways, the combination up here, they don't talk about it. They, they don't give it any name. It's just kind of how to combine this thing with this thing. Lazy Bandai America. Lazy.
In my opinion, and I'll try and keep this as brief as possible, Bandai in America needs to take a lesson in thinking about who their clients are, who their customers are, what age their customers are, and how they're marketing these things. I know I should have saved that for the commentary at the end, but just... I must be cross day day or something. I'm sorry. Okay, here it is. The white blaster, Beetle, Borg, um, Beetle Blaster Megazord. The reason it's called a blaster because it has a ton of blasters all over it. Which, you know, fair enough. That's a hell of a mohawk. I'm getting a Saturday Night Live vibe off of this thing or something. I don't know. I don't care. It's got a big old hole in the back of his head, too. Ava, stop critiquing the toy. You're supposed to be objective. I know, I know, I know. The only new detail, a handle. Aha! I just figured it out. I just figured it out. That's why the arm is tilted at a weird angle on the Samurai Megazord. It's because when he's completely defenseless, the shield is in full profile, and he can hold it so it actually looks good. But then, when he actually wants to defend himself, the shield is turned on edge and at an angle. So the only thing that ends up getting protected is his face. Ah, okay, maybe not his face. Maybe, like his left arm. His left arm will be defended, so that's good to know. I see, so that's why they tilted the arm at that angle like that, the ratcheting joint. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks, Band America. Thanks. I, uh, I learned something new today. So, what is the difference between the Zord Builder System Beetle Zord with Mega Ranger set and its original Japanese counterpart... The Samurai Gatai series number one, Kabuto Origami, from the 2009 Super Sentai series, Samurai Sentai Shinkinger. Good question. And not so difficult to answer, because, well, I've already been down this road one time before. That's the difference. It is a huge difference. It's a completely different toy. You know, sometimes I wish my camera would shoot in widescreen so I'd be able to cut out the top and the bottom here. Sometimes I wish I could do that, but unfortunately if I try and do that... I'd actually lose resolution, and the picture would actually be smaller. Ava, irrelevant. Get on with it. Anyways, yeah, huge difference. Aside from the fact that, well, huge difference. I mean, look at this. Look at the size difference there. Yeah, th I really need this in widescreen. This is ridiculous. Yeah, you can see the size difference right now. Huge difference. I keep using that word. Oh, well. And the reason that they're so different from each other is, aside from that, is that this actually tried to pack two gimmicks into it. One, that it works by itself. You flip this little switch. You turn the actual disc. That was that was the gimmick. Or this was the beginning of the gimmick. Is that you had the actual heat end disc. In, in Power Rangers, they're known as power discs. You had the actual power disc. This is how you obtained the heat end disc for, you know, the, the, the Kabuto Origami, okay? They provided it. Already built in. Snapped in place nicely. Then you unlatched it up here. You unlatch this thing right here, and then you turn the head. Which, nice gimmick. Fair enough. Whatever. But one of the problems that we had with the Kabuto Origami is that, like it did in the show, when it rolled, its head would turn. Not always, but sometimes. I suppose it kind of makes sense that way. But we always had this feeling like we should have been able to turn the head and have it roll at the same time without having to hold it at this really weird angle. You know, it just it, it just doesn't work that way. But anyways, ooh, I wonder what this thing is. So there was that. So, in this case, as a cost-cutting measure, obviously they shrunk down the size of it significantly. You also cannot remove the power disc, which is actually a power pancake, because it's actually rather ovalish looking, and it's just kind of molded in there. You can see those... Well, I guess you can't, because it's... Focus. I have to autofocus these things. Man, I'm being crotchety today. <sighs> I'm sorry. This, that's just how this one's going to work today. Anyways, um, they removed the disc, so you obviously can't turn it. However, and this is the only thing, the only thing, again, I'm doing commentary early, blah, blah, blah. The only thing I like about the Beetlezord is it actually did the thing that the Japanese version did not. So, I'm just going to start my commentary early and say that was the only thing that I liked about the Beatles or that, that was corrected by Bandai America that the original Japanese version did not have. Now, 
Um, I actually haven't had to do this before in any of my other reviews, but the combination that these two things make is actually different as well. Very different. The Zord Builder system, Beetle Zord with Mega Ranger, actually transforms in a completely different way because the Beetle Zord does not form a giant, oversized beetle looking helmet thingy like this does right here. Like, there's the face, you know, it, it, it is a helmet, you know, so, so they kept that part right, okay? They, they did the same thing there. But the difference is they kind of eliminated the rest of the Zord from the back, okay? And then the, 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 the origami's legs, the beetles, or the origami's, the, the kabuto origami, I'm sorry, the legs actually formed more cannons along both arms. So they gave us the, the, the rolling thing, you know, you roll the wheels and the head turns, that's good. But for some strange reason, they felt it necessary to completely change the transformation process. So, uh, yeah, that's the difference. Now, there is one other difference, though. The reason that the Kabuto Shinkano, that's what this is called, the reason it has this huge thing stuck on the back of its head is because when you close it up, just like it does in the show, and then unlock this thing back here, what was it, Kabuto Hole? Something like that? The head spins, or the, the helmet thingy spins. So, I mean, strange a gimmick as that is, um, the original Japanese version could actually do that. So you split that thing like that. So that's the reason. So clearly in Bandai America, while they wanted to keep the head spinning thing, they didn't want to have this huge honking thing hanging off the back, which actually was prone to tipping over rather easily. I mean, this is rather back heavy. It's so back heavy, in fact, they worried about the joints breaking. So they included this little extra, extra piece with the Kabuto origami. They included this thing. To, to literally cover their backside so that if it decided to snap, it wouldn't snap very far and pinch anybody. So what's the difference between the two in combined forms? Well, pretty significant difference. All right, Ava, I know you're kind of bursting at the seams, but now you can do your commentary. So here it is a couple of days later. Um, I took a break because I was getting so frustrated with this thing, and I was just kind of babbling incoherently. I just needed to get away from it, think about something else for a little bit, and just kind of clear my head on the subject. But at the same time, I come back to it, and I just, ugh. What's frustrating to me about these Zord Builder toys, and I'm going to try and not rehash the thing that I already did with the Zord Builder system, Samurai Megazord. I'm going to try and not do that every single time. But one of the things that concerns me, and this this little section here of the commentary applies to all of the Zord Builder um, folding Zords that I'm going to be reviewing. So this, this just kind of keep this in mind as for all future videos. One of the big things that concerns me is where the development is going into these toys. This figure completely unnecessary. I'll tell you right now, I haven't collected a Power Rangers figure in forever, you know, because I don't like them. I don't want them. I don't need them. Um, and really, I don't see the Mega Rangers, specifically the Mega Mode Rangers, as being anything significant beyond that. Um, it is interesting to have the Rangers interact with the Deluxe Transforming Zords, even though this is not Deluxe, but it does transform. Even though it's nice to have that, Shouldn't it really be the consumer's choice whether or not they have a figure included in the set or not? And even then, isn't it really up to the consumer to decide with what kind of pose they want to put it in when they put it up on top of that Zord? This is fixed pose. The only thing that poses is this. Actually, I wonder if the plastic's broken. And then the helmet can come off. While it's nice to have the Rangers in their civilian form, isn't that better suited for like a four and a half inch or a five inch figure? I remember the good old days, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1, 2, and 3, wherever it was. You'd push on the buckles, the front and back of the torso would open up, and the heads would flip around. Like, that was a cool guy. I wouldn't mind seeing a return of that. That, that was acceptable. Yeah, they were a bit broad in the torso, but you know, what can you do? Anyways, if I want an action figure, let me choose whether I want to get an action figure. Don't include it in here, because ultimately... 
including this figure, this exclusive figure, which can only be found in this set, including this, actually brings the whole thing down. You got a fixed pose. You got a helmet that looks really. You got to arrange your helmet inside that's really derpy. But really, I want to discuss the fact that the budget for this thing gets ruined. Here's what I mean. Here's here's an example of this. A couple of years ago, Bandai America assisted with another company. It was it wasn't Saban, but it was actually a different company, and it came to be known in the United States as Common Rider Dragon Knight. I know, I know, everybody in the world has heard about this, but. Uh, the original Japanese toys from 2001 were, you know, also too expensive to import in, I want to say, 2008, 2009, something like that. I can't remember when. But anyways, they were too expensive to import. And so Bandai America instead created their own versions of the heroes. Well, hero. Anyways, th this, this is the only one of those figures I ever got. Anyways, um, this was a standard action figure. And uh, here you go, for scale's sake, okay? Now you know how big it is. One of the big complaints, not just from American consumers, but from the people who knew the original Japanese products, the big complaint was these things are way, way too small, okay? This, this was a common complaint, okay? As a result, it didn't have the level of, nearly the level of articulation that most action figures uh, in the Power Rangers lines usually had. It only had single axis, so I could go on. And I've actually done a different review for this toy anyways. Anyways... The whole point of scaling these downs, or, or at least the, the gimmick for Kamen Rider uh, Dragon Knight, is that each and every one of them comes with a contract monster, a contract beast, who kind of provides them their powers, and when they use their cards, the contract monster will actually take parts of itself and change into weapons for the, the, the rider to use. Well, you know, these also had to be scaled down. Part of the problem, though, is, and, and this was sold separately from from this, and yeah, it kind of looks like it, but again, completely lacked articulation and did not separate into nearly as many pieces. As a matter of fact, for the character who had the most amount of guns and stuff, the only weapon they provided that came from the contract monster was this stupid melee shooting thing, which was the head, which, ironically enough, never seen in the show. I actually had to go online to figure out what kind of weapon that was. So anyways, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the scale is right, and it did have an interactive weapon. However, this could have done so much more than it actually did, because, and the same thing applies to the Beatles Lord, which is why I'm bringing this up. They could have had this separate in a bunch of different places. This actually turns into about five different weapons right here. It, at least it should have. In the show, it's separated, but this toy does not. It's a single piece with a pair of shoulders, and that thing comes off. The reason this lacked in articulation and features and being able to separate and attach to the rider as it should, you know, Command Rider Torque was the, the, was the artillery heavy guy, is because for whatever reason, Bandai America felt it necessary to include the civilian form of the Kamen Rider included in this set. So, much like with the Beetlezord, they spent money on this thing which could have gone into this thing, which could have gone into making the basic Command Rider figure larger. This could have been larger, and as a result, this could also have been larger. But no, they put the budget into this. By the way, it looks absolutely nothing at all like the guy in the show, any of the three of them. And you're basically putting budget into something that nobody cared about, that nobody ever used. So... You know, the line as a whole suffered as a result, not only from shrinking, the shrinking down, okay, that makes sense because, you know, economy, blah, 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 blah. But the problem that everybody had was the money that was spent making these molds and painting this up and attempting to, the money spent on this figure could have gone into making this bigger and more articulate, could have been gone, it could have gone into this, making this bigger, more articulate, have more features on it. The exact same thing applies with the Beetlezord. The exact same thing applies with the Beetlezord. Why did they put the money into an action figure that A, I would not collect, B, would not want to collect, and C, has absolutely nothing to do with transforming? He doesn't write a top like this in the show. Now, I can understand how, from a toy selling perspective, having the Beetlezord and all the other folding zords later on. Having those zords be able to interact with action figures, good idea. 
I actually support that. But not at the sacrifice of this thing. Don't sacrifice all this just to give us an exclusive action figure, which nobody likes, and by the way, doesn't even get used properly on there. It, do, it, it doesn't fit on there properly. I had to jam his foot down there, and I swear I shaved off some plastic when I, when I put it on there for the first time. It doesn't even fit right. And on top of that, it doesn't even look right because his foot doesn't even attach. You can't pose in any other direction. You could take any other Power Rangers figure from off of the shelf at the toy stores, and you could have stuck it on there, and you would have heard nothing wrong from me. Aside from the fact this is too small and it's lacking in feature, that would not have been an issue. But instead, they decided to take the money which could have gone into this and made this a better product, and they sunk it into this. I don't get that. Bandai America, let the consumers decide. Yes, in the future, Zord Builder systems make them compatible with figures. Yes, I agree. But do not, do not think that is excusable reason to put an exclusive figure in there. You know what? You could put all six five, six of the Samurai Rangers or whatever series is coming next, put them into an exclusive box set and then call it good, okay? You could have done that. That would have been acceptable. This is not, okay? This is pathetic. This is unnecessary. And by the way, it can't even be posed. Like, it doesn't turn the wrist, the only thing that turns the head, and that face does not look like Mike from the show. Get this thing out of here. So yeah, that's that's one big piece of contention right there. One of the really big issues that I had with the Kabuto Origami, the Japanese version, I know it's not a good thing to talk about the Japanese version compared to the Japanese version, blah, blah, blah. But one of the things I really disliked about the Kabuto Origami and the, the one that came after is it had this huge wing thing sitting on the end here, which is obviously used part of a combination later on. Uh, I did not like having it there. I thought it should have been able to come off there. Now, it is actually integral to the uh, the spinning heat in this gimmick. That it, it actually is integral in there. As a matter of fact, you can see the you can see the gear, the end of the gear system sitting in there. So, uh, you know, I'll get into that at, a, at another time. But Overall, I did not like that this was here. Like, I wish that this had been... There was a good old day, in, in, even in Power Rangers and Super Sunday, where components of a Megazord, if it wasn't seen in the show, or if it was denigrating to the overall look, you could actually detach it. That was something that I thought could have been done with this wing right here. I, I really did not like this thing here, because it's nice and clean over here, and vast majority of the time, it doesn't look good. I mean, you, you see the wing over here, and then there's nothing over here. It completely spoils the look. It's this huge, asymmetrical piece of sh** sticking off the side here, and no one knew what it was for until a couple of months later when we got the all three pieces together. So that was something I didn't like. Now, here it is two years later. This thing merges in more or less the same way, but the key difference is the gear spinning... The, I'm sorry, the, the, the disc spinning gimmick has been changed, so there is no disc, and the gimmick that was included in the Kabuto Origami does not apply here because, well, now you've got this spinning thing, which, as I've already mentioned, this was actually the only good part of the toy that I actually liked. This was something that got fixed. This is what it should have done. I appreciated the head spinning uh, thing. So, okay, so that works. What I don't get, though, is because the gear system inside is completely different and as a matter of fact has been uh, decreased or removed significantly there is no reason for this wing section which is actually smaller significantly smaller there's no reason for it to be there there's no reason because all this is is just it's just a connection port I mean liter literally the, the the other Zord just kinda snaps into the section and that's it which it did on the Kabuto origami as well fair enough but why couldn't this come off? Why didn't this thing come off? Yeah, there would have been a huge hole on the side. Well, there's a bunch of panels and, you know, what's this thing over here? So, you know, it would have looked ugly, but, 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 it wouldn't have been asymmetrical in that regard. That I don't get either. This could have been removable. This, and, and, and you know, I already know how the thing transforms because, well, I did it for the teaser trailer, but I do not like the way this 
this is not so integral to the overall look of the Beatles or that they couldn't have in some way removed this. Put a couple of pegs on the thing, had it snap in with some tabs or something like that. No excuse, I did not like that either. Yeah, this thing, whatever. These things are part of the transformation. I'll get to that in a moment. But, or combining, but yeah, I, I do not like the wing thing there. That was also something that I really did not like. That's just, uh, that was frustrating as well. Now, I can understand Bandai America's need to simplify the transformation to remove as much complicatedness, is that even a word, out of the transformation, out of the gimmicks, out of these toys as much as possible compared to the Japanese versions. Fair enough. I understand that. I wasn't particularly thrilled with how the Kabuto Origami stuck off the back of the Kabuto Shikano either. Like, I, di I didn't like that, but... I already went over that in the review of the Kabuto Origami several years ago. However, one of the things one of the things I actually like and is rather distinctive about the Kabuto Shinken O specifically is it's not just all on the backpack as far as what the accessory origami did. The Kabuto Shinken O specifically and only actually removed something and just turned it into these little wing things. They could just have easily, you know, found some way of keeping the legs on there and then that it would have just been a beetle sitting on the back with a face sticking out the front. Okay. They could easily have done that. These also came off in order to form the Dai Tenku, so it may have been a case of convenience. You know, these already have to come off. Hey, I know, let's, let's do something with them during the transformation. Oh, I know, let's stick them on the arms of the Kabuto Shinkano. Okay, that works. That's fine. Whatever their reasoning, and it actually does give it a, a, a nice look. I actually do like this, because in addition to the cannon barrels up here, it's got more barrels here and more of them over there. So, that works. No worries there. With the folding zords of the Zord Builder system, transformation was simplified. Okay, fair enough. Makes sense in the long run. I can understand that. If you remove the spinning disc gimmick, you want to put the spinning head gimmick and keep that in there in some way, that works just fine. No worries there. However, here's where my problem is. They kind of forgot that they had this whole other half of the body sticking out the back. Now, I can tell you right now, the reason why it is that the body separates from the head is because, well, actually, I'm not quite certain, because this doesn't weigh nearly as much as the Japanese version did, and it's not nearly as big and actually the Samurai Megazord has slightly larger heels proportionately, it's able to hold its own balance. There, I mean, this will barely tip over. It's going to hold itself just fine. And this little bit of weight on the back will make no difference. Case in point, you put it on the front, it doesn't tip over. So I'm not quite certain why it is they did the disconnecting head thing. I don't quite get that. I, I, I don't understand. They, they could easily have left it on there. But here's the thing I don't get. Why turn this into a shield? The thing, the big thing that bothered me with the Kabuto Origami was actually in fact that it wasn't and somehow changed into a backpack in some way. That, that the head, now obviously the head and the body had to remain connected in order for the, in order to spin the disc so that the head would turn in, in uh, Kabuto Shinkano. That makes sense. But even if that wasn't there, it would have made more sense to have this as a backpack and snap it on in, in, in some old, in some fashion or other. Matter of fact, there's a pair of clips sitting right there. They could have done something about that. Right there. They could have done that. No. Instead, they decided to turn it into a shield. Huh? What? Okay. You, you, you want to take the back heaviness off of it there is no back heavy. This thing is small enough. You don't have to worry about back heavy. So, okay, so fine, they decided. So, if that's the case, why would they turn it into a shield? One of the things I liked at the Kab about the Kabuto Shikano, as I, as I just pointed out, was the arm things. Now, spoiler alert here, the legs actually do come off for the, uh, what's it called, the Samurai Battle Wing. Okay, the, le the legs do come off. However, why is it that these can't connect onto here? You know, why, why, why don't they attach on both sides? They could easily have done it. The connection points here are identical to the Shinkano. The Japanese version, this truly was here. This was truly here. But the way this thing connects together 
you know, you could have put it down here on the forearm. It would have looked stupid, but it would have been closer to what they had in the show. Or you could have found some way of maybe have a little tab sticking at it. It would stick in there, stick it in there. Or maybe have this be a peg, a, a rectangular peg, stick it on there, friction or something like that. Then you would have had that look. In fact, I'm going to take this off. Now, on this side, obviously, you wouldn't have had that. You would have had a, a, a tag or something like that sticking out the front. It would have looked weird, but we've had worse. In, in Power Rangers history, but there would have, been, would have been nothing wrong with that. These have to come off anyways for the Samurai Battle Wing combination later on, you know, two Zords later. Why why wasn't that tried in core, or, or maybe stick it in the top? You know, have it stick on the top somehow so that they stick out, or you know, there, there was no reason why not. And once you did that, the question becomes, what do you do with this? Aha! What you do, you stick it on the back. That way, he can still hold 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 the the, the Megazord saber thingy. Here's a, so what I'm thinking. The reason they did it this way is because they could provide the Samurai Megazord with a shield. Because you know the Samurai Megazord didn't come with a shield. So oh, we need to provide it with a shield. That's the only thing I can think of. The only thing I can think of. The reasoning behind why they did it this way. Now, by the way, you could have also have turned this into a blaster or something like that, or you could have left it attached back here. Again, doesn't weigh that much in its smaller form. But, no, they decided to go with a shield, at which, which looks absolutely nothing like it does in the show. Kids are going to look at this thing, and they're going to look back at the toy shells and they say, I, I, I don't want that one. It, it doesn't do that in the show. I want the one that, that's, that's in the show. Well, the, the helmet looks kind of similar, but what is that thing? Kids are going to be looking around wondering what happened. Did they get the wrong version? Maybe they need to get the deluxe version. Maybe there's a bigger version they could get. Band America. I'm not a kid, so I will notice this, but I can also tell you, when I was the age of Power Rangers, I too would have noticed the change. They're not going to want to get this, because it doesn't look like it does in the show. And there was no reason, <laughs> again, you sunk your money into this thing. I don't get the this thing. You sunk your money in the wrong place. You, th there's no reason that these could not have been attached to here and then have this either be a gun, you know, some sort of blaster, or have it stick on the back. You've got, you've got this thing sitting on the back. Take advantage of it. I'll tell you right now, that only gets used twice. No, it only this only gets used once, ever, for the Samurai Gigas or whatever that thing is called. This thing doesn't even get used in the final combinations. It only gets used one time, and it's not even for a final combination. You had it there. Why didn't you use that? That wasn't in the Japanese version. You guys put it there, so use it. Or better yet, set it up so this, this foldy thing isn't even here and the parts will just snap into the back. What? Why'd you... Ugh. I, I just... I just... Ugh. As with the Samurai Megazord itself, um, is it a good toy? Will kids like it? Kids might like it because of the rolly spinny thing. They'll also like it because you can put the Ranger on top. But they're probably going to have to struggle with the fact that the head is not easy to pull apart and this thing doesn't look anything at all like it does in the show. I do like the head spinning thing. I do like the ranger stands on top. I just don't like how they were executed and what it took to, to reach that point, all the other steps that were missed along the way or you decide to put them aside for something else. It's the thought process that goes through Bandai American Bandai creation which really, really frustrates me. There is no excuse whatsoever for why it is these could not have come off stuck on here. There is no excuse whatsoever for why it is the body back here could not have used this back here. No excuse whatsoever. Final recommendation. Get it for your Megazord? Sure, why not? It gets used in the later combination. Is it a good toy by itself? No, it is not. You could get it just for shits and giggles, but that's the... Really, the only reason you get this is to combine it with the big things, and I said things, later on. So, is it worth it? If you're interested in getting the Zord Builder systems, it's required. But is it good by itself? Not necessarily. There's some questionable things that went into it.
Wait, 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 wait. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Actually, I did forget. I turned the camera off. I signed off. I was like, wait, wait, wait. There's something I forgot. You know, Band of America, you, you, I got I to gotta heap more hate on them. Okay, so so this is more haterade being thrown around. I just, <laughs> I love how stupid Band of America is. I mean, it, it's so frustrating compared to what I got back in the early 90s and even the early 2000s. It's, it's just, it's, it's mind-boggling how, fa how far they've come. Interesting thing is that in Japan, the Japanese versions of the Zords are called origami because they were actually based on folding paper. I don't know how the origami came into being because I haven't seen all of Samurai Sentai Shinkatsu, but the point is they are indeed origami, folding spirits, folding gods. That's what it is, which, of course, is a play on words on the word origami, which is ordinarily translated as folding paper. In the packaging, very specifically, this is called origami beetle sword. Okay, there it is. It's very tiny. It's very annoying. It doesn't stand together very well. The cardboard's already crimped in places. You know, I'm, I'm just going to throw this thing back in the box when I'm done with it. I, I, I actually despise this thing. Now, just, just because it, 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 it... I understand what Bandai America is trying to do. It's origami. You know, it looked like origami, but this is not origami. It's cardstock, and you punched it out, and you colored it up, and then you turned it into this. Here's the thing I don't get, and this Power Rangers has always been aimed at years four to six and on up. This is the time when they're starting to go to school, okay? They're starting to learn about the world around them. You know, I honestly, I think Bandai America missed a really good opportunity here. I, th I think they got so wrapped up in their whatever it is they're doing over there. I can't think of what they're doing over there. I think they got so wrapped up in it, this is actually one of those cases where they missed something. I think what they could have done is they could have commissioned some wizened old Japanese sage sit out in the middle of a valley forest or something like that, or up on the mountain's top, commission him to create instructions for actual uh, Kabuto Mushi beetle. That, that's what this particular is. I, I don't think it's an elephant beetle. I, somebody please tell me what the English name for this thing is. It's, it's like, I don't know. What would we call it over here? I don't know. Anyways... What they should have done is commission somebody to come up with an easy-to-make-at-home-by-yourself, kids, and with your parents supporting you, an actual origami beetle. Maybe it didn't have to look like this one, but it would have been a beetle. And then they would have provided the instructions for that in the packaging of the Beetle Zord with the Mega Ranger. Okay, So that way, kids could then you know, get their eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, drop it down to eight and a half by eight and a half, you know, cut it up into a square so that it's eight and a half by eight and a half, and then have them go through the, the process of learning how to make an actual origami. So this would have been both entertaining and educational. Something that Power Rangers isn't very good at, by the way. They they just kinda of scramble your brains. And that's not just kids, but the collectors as well. And here's the funny thing. If the kids didn't get it, didn't know how to build it, that would have made for some great bonding time with their parents. And, get this, long time ago, before Power Rangers, I learned how to make not only the traditional origami crane that everybody knows and loves dearly, but I also learned how to make things like a dragon. I also knew how, I knew how to make a flower. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember how to do those now, but I did get to draw them up years later. I, you know, I remembered how to, how to make one because I had learned it when I was little. You know what? Bandai America could have made this such a memorable experience. Origami, these things come from Japan. In, in, in Power Rangers Samurai, the, the, the Rangers themselves came from Japan. You know, the, the legacy came from Japan. I think, Bandai America, I think Bandai America missed a huge opportunity here. They could have made these things so memorable. Hey, kids, let's make an origami, a real honest-to-God origami. Not this cheap piece of... Look at that. How long is this going to last? It's going to get sat on. It's going to get crushed. They're going to take it to school. Look at that. I just kind of... And it was done. You know, an actual origami beetle might actually have stood up better than this. And, and look at that. It's folding. It, this is just... just. It's so half-assed. It's not even funny. It's so half-assed. It's not funny. Are you telling me that it would have cost that much? They probably invested more money in this cardboard punch out cookie cutter piece of shit than they would have to actually commission somebody to 
design a simple, you know, 12-step beetle origami, an actual origami that you would not cut up and you would not use pencil or whatever, but you'd actually fold it up, take 15, 20 minutes to make it, share the experience with your kids, share the experience with your classmates, have a wonderful experience out of it, and you know what? They'll probably come back the next year and see, well, they might make more origami later on. That'd be pretty cool. It might even encourage kids to go learn about Japanese culture. But wait, if they did that, then they might find out about Super Sentai, and then they would learn that you guys are complete a and then they'd start putting their money where it actually belonged, along with the proper products over in Japan. You know what? You're absolutely right. This was the best thing they could possibly have done. This right here was the best thing they could have done. Good one, Bandai America. Great idea. This is AVUnit4A for CollectionDX.com.